Hello, I'm Pastor Albert Colbert, and today we are recording from a different location. Our video for today is about Pentecost and the Tower of Babel. This past Sunday, May 31st, 2020, was Pentecost Sunday. The coming Sunday is Trinity Sunday. Pentecost is rooted in the Old Testament and originally was 50 days after the Passover. It was known as the Feast of Weeks. Exodus 23:16 calls it the Feast of Harvest. As the Jewish people became dispersed throughout the world, many of the diaspora would return to Jerusalem to make offerings on Pentecost. This sets the background for the day of Pentecost, recorded in the book of Acts in chapter 2. On the day of Pentecost, the disciples were gathered together, and as Jesus promised, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. People from all over the world heard the mighty works of God in their own language. Jesus fulfilled his promise to provide the disciples with a helper and a counselor who would remain with them forever. Now Pentecost is recorded in the book of Acts chapter 2. Please listen to the reading. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. Now the Holy Spirit is mentioned throughout the Bible, but is most clearly revealed in the New Testament. The Holy Spirit is mentioned in the creation of the world in Genesis 1, verse 1. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. In Psalm 51, verse 11, David prays, Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29 is an Old Testament prophecy about the day of Pentecost described in the book of Acts. Joel 28 says, And I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. One of the most famous instances of the Holy Spirit in the Bible is found at Jesus' baptism. Matthew 3.16 says, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting him. This is why the church associates the Holy Spirit with the image of a dove. The third article of the Apostles' Creed, with the explanation from Martin Luther, says, I believe in the Holy Ghost, one holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, Believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Ghost has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. Even as he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in one true faith, in which Christian church he forgives daily and richly all sins to me and all believers, and at the last day will raise up me and all the dead, 
and will give to me and to all believers in Christ everlasting life. This is most certainly true. The job of the Holy Spirit is to direct people to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is sometimes called the shy member of the Holy Trinity because the Holy Spirit doesn't talk about himself. Instead, the Holy Spirit talks about Jesus. This is why the explanation to the third article of the Creed says that we cannot by our own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called us through the gospel, enlightens us with his gifts, sanctifies, that is, makes us holy, the entire Christian church on earth. And finally, on the last day, the Holy Spirit will raise us from the dead. The Holy Spirit is the life giver. From this brief introduction to Pentecost and the Holy Spirit, we would like to move on to discuss the connection between Pentecost and the Tower of Babel. The account of the Tower of Babel is recorded in Genesis chapter 11. Please follow along. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down, and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord dispersed them over the face of the earth. After the flood, all of the people on earth spoke the same language. Imagine what that would be like. Language is a tremendous gift of God. It allows us to communicate, to share ideas, and to define ourselves as a people. Even today, we frequently refer to people groups by their language. The French, the Italians, the Germans, the English, the Chinese, the Japanese. You get the idea. Language defines a people. They defines who a people are. And anyone who has studied a language knows that expressions shape how people think. For instance, in English, we might say, I dropped the pencil. However, in Spanish, a person might say, the pencil fell from my hand. Language makes people different from one another. The Tower of Babel radically changed the world. It is the reason why we have different languages today. The Bible describes people migrating to a place called the land of Shinar. In the Bible, Shinar frequently refers to the land of Babylon which would be in modern-day Iraq. There, the people decided to build a city and a tower that would be very tall. The scriptures do not say how tall the tower was. There are a number of accounts about the Tower of Babel in ancient literature. Extra-biblical sources say the tower was anywhere from 250 feet to 500 feet tall. Some accounts even say it was a mile tall. This is most unlikely. A cuneiform tablet from Uruk dated in 229 BC, which was a copy of a much older tablet, says the tower was 298 feet tall. This seems likely. In any case, whatever the tower's height was, it was the tallest tower on earth at the time. According to King Nebuchadnezzar in the sixth century BC, the original tower was built by a formal king long ago. He wrote, 
A former king built the temple of the seven lights of the earth, but he did not complete its head. Since a remote time, people had abandoned it without order, expressing their words. Since that time, earthquakes and lightning had dispersed its sun-dried clay. The bricks of the casting had split, and the earth of the interior had been scattered in heaps. Nebuchadnezzar II, who reigned in Babylon from 605 to 562 BC, built the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. In this picture, the Tower of Babel is depicted in the background. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon was one of the ancient wonders of the world. In 331 BC, Alexander the Great captured Babylon and ordered that the tower be rebuilt. In 323 BC, Alexander the Great returned to Babylon and noticed that little progress had been made on the repairs and ordered the tower demolished. He intended to rebuild it, but died before it could be completed. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower. The Lord said, Behold, they are one people and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. Imagine what that was like. One moment you're working with another person, having a conversation, perhaps passing a brick back and forth. The next moment, you cannot understand the person next to you. Perhaps even families were divided. Perhaps fathers and sons could no longer understand each other. Eventually, People found others who spoke the same language. They gathered together and dispersed over the face of the earth. The curse of the Tower of Babel is the source of all racism, tribalism, nationalism, and division in this world. The Tower of Babel is one of the reasons we have so much strife in the world today. Culture is directly connected to language. Language and culture both defines who we are and also distinguishes how we are different from one another. If a person cannot speak my language, that person automatically is an outsider and doesn't belong to my group. People congregate with other people like themselves. This is how the tribes and the nations were formed. And even within the same language group, we form subgroups, we form cliques, we form clubs that distinguish us from other people. We form jargon and inside jokes to distinguish between those who belong and those who do not belong. On the one hand, it is good for people to find a place they feel comfortable and where they belong. On the other hand, these differences can lead to the exclusion of other people hatred for outsiders and violence. And you see, this is where Pentecost comes in. When the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, they began to proclaim the mighty works of God in different languages. Every person heard what the disciples said in their own language. Pentecost undoes the Tower of Babel. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, and visitors from Rome, Cretans and Arabians, all heard the disciples preach in their own languages. These people heard that Jesus was born, died on the cross for their sins, and arose again to unite all people all nations, all tribes, and all languages as his people. In the book of Revelation, John saw people from every nation, every tribe, every language around the throne of God. Revelation chapter 5 verses 9 through 12 says, And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priest to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. 
Then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders and the voice of many angels numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. By the blood of Jesus, the church is a ransom people for God from every tribe, nation, and language. We are a kingdom of priests to God. Pentecost describes what in the book of Acts is a foretaste of the feast to come. And this is why we sing the song, this is the feast of victory for our God in the liturgy. Although here on earth we may still speak many languages, the church speaks the language of heaven, which is full of grace and mercy. We speak the Lord's words back to him. We hear what he says and we speak it back. We share a church vocabulary that is represented in the church's liturgy. The Lord has gathered us from every nation and language into his people. There is no room for racism, tribalism, discrimination, or divisions in the church because we are all one people living under Christ. This is what Pentecost means for us. Jesus has undone the Tower of Babel. Peoples who were scattered across the face of the earth, various nations and tribes and languages, are now united as one people under Christ Jesus our Lord. The church also has the message of Christ's forgiveness for the world. When we see racism, tribalism, divisions, violence, and rioting, the church has the message of forgiveness in Christ Jesus to share. The church is a microcosm of that great feast in heaven where peoples from all nations are gathered together, worshiping the lamb who was slain. In conclusion, I hope you can see the connection between Pentecost and the Tower of Babel. Pentecost undid the curse of the Tower of Babel. The gift of the Holy Spirit calls, gathers, and enlightens the Christian church here on earth. In the church, peoples from every nation, tribe, and language become one people under Christ Jesus our Lord. At the Tower of Babel, the languages were confused. In the church, we are given a common language based upon the forgiveness that Christ Jesus gives us. Thank you for watching.